Yo, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to do my best to explain how server actions in Next.js work. I'm a big advocate of just understanding the frameworks that you use and not taking any of their functionality for granted. So in the sense that if you're using server actions or API routes from Next.js or server components, build a mental model that you can use to think about how these things are working and what kind of code is being executed in the background that you didn't write or that you're not aware of. I kind of started using these server actions for this login and register form that I have here, where basically the user can just enter some credentials um, and then they get sent to like a dashboard if they're authenticated or not. And the way that I implemented this is with server actions basically. So I have this form that it gets passed in an action and then action is a use, it comes from the use action state hook. And here's where I actually define the server action. So as you can see, there's this use server directive, which basically tells the Next.js that everything from every function exported from this file is a server action. But that's kind of what I want to talk about in today's video is like what actually is a server action. So a server action is just synthetic sugar. And what that means is it's just a shortcut for doing something that you often have to do. So the developers at Vercel noticed that developers often have to do a specific pattern or rewrite the same code. And instead of the developer having to write that every single time now, they can just use the use server directive. But all it does under the hood is creates an endpoint, which the client can call to execute this function on the server. So instead of you having to manually define an API route that makes a fetch request to execute this function, that's all done in just this use server uh, component. And then when Next.js bundles all of this, it handles that for you internally. All right, so let's take a look at this server action file to kind of get a breakdown of what Next.js is doing internally. So the first step is, okay, we define a server action. Then under the hood, what Next.js does is it splits this server action into kind of two components, a client component and a server component. So it creates a yeah it creates a client side proxy and the way you can imagine this it's like a middleman between the client and the server and it's basically just going to be some code that is executed or run before the client actually makes the call to the server. So under the hood it creates this client side proxy that we're going to get into. And then on the server it registers the server action endpoint which is basically going to associate a unique ID to the function that we defined here, for example, what is it sign up or login function, right? So that function is now going to have an ID, then step four is going to be using this client side proxy that Next.js gave in step two, to call that server action endpoint. But we're not actually going to call this directly, we're going to call a general endpoint that takes the ID that was defined here, and then finds the correct server action, and then calls that server action. And so this is all going to be done under the hood. The only thing we have to do is define the server action ourselves. And then this will be created for us, kind of abstracted for us. And that's the synthetic sugar in a sense. And if you've developed web applications yourself, you do this all the time, more or less. You create an endpoint with some functionality that communicates your client and your server. All right, so let's define the server action. And that's basically just going to insert a name into the database. So that inserts a name. Here, we're going to have the use server directive. Uh, and this tells Next.js that any function that's exported from this file is going to be a uh, server action. And cursor is reading my mind, this is going to be basically the function, um, handle some form submit that gets the name from the form data, and then inserts into the database and returns a success message. All right, so let's actually look at step four first, because I think defining the client side proxy is going to help understand how to use it in steps two and three a bit better. So I'm not the best at explaining things while I'm coding, but I just already made the function, just going to paste it in. And basically, it's just a function called create server action proxy, which returns another function. Uh, and the first step is to serialize the arguments. So first we get data structures that are in JavaScript and models that are also in JavaScript. So we serialize those into JSON or XML to be able to transfer them over the internet. Then we make a post request to the server to this general endpoint server action. And that server action or that endpoint takes an action ID which corresponds to one of the functions that we defined in this use server file. So for example, handle submit will have its own action ID. And when you call this endpoint, if you pass that action ID in, it will find that function and then execute it, right? So we can also pass in any other data through the body. And then once it's done executing on the server, it will return and we can kind of get that response in JSON and return it. All right, so now that we've actually defined our um, create server action proxy function. Let's go ahead and create our client side proxy. So that will be using the function we just defined and by passing in the unique identifier, which in this case will be handle submit. So this is again, all happening under the hood. So Next.js does all of this for us for free in a sense. Uh, and that's the benefit of using the framework, right? We get faster developer experience. 
But so what happens is the function gets called, it passes this action ID, we make a request to the server, to this general endpoint that uses the action ID, right? And then executes that function on the server. So now we've created a kind of communication line between the client and the server through this proxy. So we've looked at mainly now the client side of things, right? We have this proxy that lives more on the client side than on the server side. Um, let's take a look at how or what code actually gets generated on the server. So here we're going to actually register our server actions. And so whenever you create a server action on the server, some kind of register server action is there to handle storing these things on the server in a sense. So the register server action is going to take that action ID and then associate it with the function that needs to be executed. And remember that when we create these or when we use the use server directive, Nexus automatically bundles some code into the server and some code into the client. And this handle submit function lives in that server environment. So we have access to it in this register server action, which also lives on the server. So we associate the ID with the function that basically takes the form data and de deserializes it. So remember, serialize is converting like native data types from, so like, for example, JavaScript or Python data types into internet protocol or data types which you can use to transfer data, such as JSON or XML. And deserializing is what is the opposite. Um, so usually you serialize on the client and you deserialize on the server. And then with that deserialized data, we call the handle submit function um, that we want to get executed. So this is kind of the flow now, right? We get this proxy and that server action is registered on the server. The proxy finds which function to execute based on an ID and then it executes it. So we're on to our final step now, which is actually defining the function that will be called when this endpoint is hit. And that's step five, right? Ser server side handler to call the correct server action endpoint. And that will look something like this. We get the action ID that's passed in the request. We make sure to have it in the proper form. We have some kind of helper function which gets the correct action ID or gets the correct action based on the action ID, does some error handling to make sure the action actually exists. And if it does, we execute the action, which will be that function in the very beginning, handle submit, and then we return some kind of response to the client and catch any errors for some error handling. So there you have it. That's the full flow of what Next.js does under the hood when you create a server action. And this is also what it looks like in code. So I tried to explain it using source code, but I think through all of this, it's also helpful to just visualize what's going on. And that's why I always use Eraser for that. So basically their server action here um, has this handle submit function. And what happens is it splits it up like the bun it bundles it up into two different things um something that gets stored on the server so code that lives on the server and can only be executed on the server and code that gets sent to the client when it requests for it so you have these two different parts you have the client proxy and it knows how to communicate with the server and you have the server action which is bundled with the actual server code then you have kind of like a registry of actions which maps an id to some kind of function so in this case id to handle submit and it's accessible using this general route, which is slash underscore server action. And whenever you hit that route, you basically call the action that's associated with the ID that you passed. So this is what it looks like more in a picture format. But the goal of this video was really to improve your mental model of what a server action is and what it does under the hood. And I really recommend that if you're in the junior slash meteor position as a software developer, that you take some time out to really strengthen your mental models and read and understand source code to not take these things for granted right so that you understand your frameworks you understand how they're working internally and that will overall you'll just realize that you know and understand why things are going wrong or the limitations of what you can do with your framework so yeah i can highly recommend that and i hope this video helped um, and if it did just let me know in the comments let me know if you reached the end of the video that would be nice as well